Hi, this is Sandy with Global Mana. The Hawaiian island of Maui is known for its natural beauty the world over. But just beneath the surface, algae blooms are devastating the coral reef. We spoke to Robin Knox, president of Water Quality Consulting, about the lawsuit filed against Maui County that could be a big win for clean water across the nation. We had an idea that it might be related to the sewage. My colleague Megan Daler had made a lot of observations of algae around the island. In all the populated areas, every mile of coastline, she took a sample. And then in the unpopulated side where it's pretty remote, every five miles, there's three main treatment plants in Maui County on the island of Maui. And there were super abundant or abundant algal growth at the locations of those three treatment plants with the injection wells. We wanted to investigate further. We got wastewater and we did a series of dilutions and sure enough, the more wastewater you had, the more the algae would grow. And not only that, they were kind of happier. They were healthier looking, they had more pigments. So then we put out these uh, little cages with little pieces of algae in them. Like little tape recorders, they're eating nitrogen and it's storing in their tissues and we can analyze that and see what the isotope ratio is. When we did that, we could actually visualize that on a map and draw what's called the wastewater plume, concentrated near the source and it gets less concentrated as you move out. At Kahakili in West Maui, where the Lahaina treatment plant is, the scientists there were studying the reef. They discovered that you could tell from a certain stable isotope ratio where the algae were getting their food. And we could tell the difference with this technique between background nitrogen, nitrogen from cesspools, nitrogen from more advanced wastewater treatment, and nitrogen from runoff or agriculture. We could directly tell in this area where the reef was being overgrown by algae that these algae were eating sewage from an advanced treatment plant, which is what the Lahaina treatment plant is. When we went to the county to discuss this, they said to us, you have no published evidence. And so we did publish it in Marine Pollution Bulletin. The next day, EPA issued an order for information to the county of Maui that said, we think based on this paper, that there's evidence that you're violating the Clean Water Act. Because the Clean Water Act says, if you're discharging something from a point source, and the word well is in the definition of point source, if you're discharging pollutants from that point source to waters of the U.S., which the ocean is a water of the U.S., you can't do that without a permit. It's illegal to do that without a permit. And if the county had that permit, that permit would prescribe things to protect the water quality of the ocean. But because they didn't have that permit, they weren't doing some of the things they needed to do to take care of the ocean. And that included not removing pathogenic bacteria from the water that they were injecting into the ground. And that water was coming out in the ocean. So people that were swimming were being exposed to disease-causing bacteria. The research team was getting ill with MRSA, methoxylin-resistant Staph aureus. Now, no one has conclusively shown the correlation between sewage and those diseases, but we do know that here on Maui, where we don't really have, in my opinion, adequate control of our sewage, we do have a high level of MRSA infections that people think they're acquiring in the ocean. So that hasn't been proven yet, but there's a lot of um, anecdotal evidence. It makes sense if you enrich an ocean environment with food for bacteria that they're going to grow. And so the sewage is food, it's going out in the ocean, the bacteria are there, they're all growing, they're feeding the algae, which produce sugars, which makes the bacteria grow more. So it's easy to see how our activity on land can really make an ecological shift on the coral reef. EPA did order the county to apply for a permit. The county did, with the help from the federal government, some dye studies that conclusively proved what our study was saying. So the federal courts have upheld the position that this is an illegal discharge and that the county needs to get a permit. The county is still, I believe, going through a, an appeal with that process. And it may seem like this is remote and maybe unique to Maui because there aren't sewage injection wells everywhere and there aren't coral reefs everywhere. But there are injection wells, hundreds of thousands of them in this country. And it's always been kind of a loophole that 
those discharges were not looked at to see how they impacted surface waters because the assumption was they weren't going to get to the surface waters. So this case, done out here, you know, 2,500 miles from everywhere, may have far-reaching impact, especially if it holds up on appeal, it will change the way the Clean Water Act is viewed and how even fracking, perhaps, fracking wells, the regulation of those could change as a result of this. Everyone under U.S. jurisdiction is very interested in this case and how it comes out. And of course, we are on Maui, and you know whether or not it's the law or whether or not something's illegal, clean water is just a good idea.